Okay, okay. I'm gonna. Come on, son. What's the girl's on for you? I invented oh, trap and beat and hip hop. Yeah, it's like I've never heard of that. Yeah, oh, yeah. Hip hop. So it's like I do a lot of records that that because I don't I don't go full pop. I'm doing these hip hop records that have like a little bit of pop twist to it because they're, they're catchy, they're mainstream, they got catchy hooks. You know, they're playing them in the club. People are people are finding these songs from all over the world saying like these are catchy songs. So that's what I'm trying to do is make like a more mainstream of music approach. I'm not trying to do like underground shit no more. I'm trying to break the barrier. That's smart. I feel like that's, uh, I mean, it depends. Like, if you do a lot of mainstream shit, then that might, like, really get you noticed. And then you can start, like, you know, incorporating your, the flow that you truly want to incorporate. But, yeah, dude, I feel like, yeah, you're, is this your music? No, I'm not actually, I'm going to put on, yeah, I'm going to put on one of our songs that me and Sonny got. Yeah, we be working together. We're coming out with, uh, this, uh, uh mixtape soon. Yeah, dropping soon. So this is like yeah, we're dropping the song we're about to show you, Toxic Love. We're gonna be dropping that soon. We're shooting a music video this Saturday. Um, just just yeah. a little snippet though, not nothing too, yeah, not yeah. too much. Yeah. This right here is Lucky. This is one of the artists I've been listening to lately. He's an underground king right now. He's been blowing up doing the underground thing for years, probably the past decade. Lucky, Lucky, he go crazy. Um, one of my homies from out here, Wave, he put me on to his music. It's fun though. There, there's the yeah. fun parts. Yeah. Like we we went on a plane or we, yeah, we went on top of a plane and we were just shooting a music video. That shit was fun. That's crazy. Yeah, well what are like what what are some places you got like shot the music videos at or just like for well for one of my music videos I went to a Crown Point. Um there's spots in Vancouver that I shot and I did like a little skit scene. It was almost like a little movie you got scene the letter? that I had. Um where it was like this girl like I was sitting down and then like we were having a dinner type thing situation and she like got mad at me you know it was good. and then she splashed some water in my face it was pretty funny I did yeah it was, it was funny it was funny uh, but yeah did that uh, in Vancouver and then the scene was up in Crown Crown Point it's near like the gorge it's like a the gorge yeah. it's got dope view yeah it's mm -hmm. crazy 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 view but music, what, what got you into singing? What got you into just rapping and singing too? So, um, to answer your question from earlier, I've, I'm on my fourth video right now. So, I started with one that was my first video called Testing. That's on my YouTube channel. I shot the, that was directed by JMB. He's done some work with A Boogie and a few other big artists. Whoa. And then Spike Tarantino, I found him through Instagram. He shot my second music video in 2018 in Harlem, New York. He shot for K Flock, Lil TJ, 
few other big artists as well. Be love. So shout out to my East Coast niggas out on the East Coast in New York. How'd you, how'd you get connected? Honestly, I just used all my marketing experience because I learned a lot of marketing in high school. That was my trade I chose. It was the easiest one. I wasn't trying to make high school like be hella work. I was trying to just breeze through that shit. So I was like, mm-hmm. let me pick marketing. It actually gave me a lot of skills and I use those skills for my rap career. If y'all want to come. Um, so I just started DMing people on Instagram, building up a clientele of people to work with. It's like Tarantino, JMB, or a few of them. We, uh, I put together the budget and we made it happen. Flew out to uh, Miami for that one. And with, uh, with, um, with JMB, flew out to Harlem for the one with Tarantino. And Dilly VFX, he shot me a Luna video. He's in Portland, Shout Oregon. Out. Dilly VFX yes, is, is hella talented. He's the best Shout director out. I've found so far in the city. But I don't know all of them, but out of the ones I've tried to work with so far, he's, he's got he's got it for sure. He's yeah. got it on lock. Y'all, y'all are well connected. It's just yeah. putting out the the music videos. Like, obviously, right. like, you know, marketing, getting, getting it going. You know, mm-hmm. getting, right. getting your name out there. Yeah, that's what we've been focusing on now with our project that we're mm-hmm. coming up with. And uh, what was your question? It was music. Uh, what got you into singing and what got you into rapping music? What got me into singing? So I've been a musician since I was a kid. Um, guitar, trumpet, piano, all that. And I always would sing. But when I, about two years ago when I first started actually getting on the mic and hopping on some you know pop, pop beats and stuff like that, uh, Juice World Beats, uh, that's when I started you know, officially. And yeah, ever since that, just been grinding, putting the work in, um, hitting the studio. Shout out to Mix District. I don't know if you heard him, Jordan Green. He's freaking, he's he's phenomenal with his engineering. Um, I've been working with him for two years now, but that's the only only studio that I've gone down to other than that you in Portland. Speak, you say loyal? Yeah, loyalty, of course. Yeah, and he's, he's phenomenal. I mean, there's nobody better at engineering out here in Portland than, than Mix District. You know, it's, it's just hands down. Um, we went there to, to record our song Toxic Love mm-hmm. and uh, yeah, he's, he's crazy with it yeah so I started getting into music I was in college on the east coast I was going to a college called Johnson and Wales University Providence Rhode Island that was going to be my path I ain't know I, I just ain't know what I was going to do so I'm like in college broke as hell looking at this interview on the or this funk flick fun, flunk funk free, uh, what's it called funk flex freestyle it was A Boogie and Don Q. All my roommates were from Harlem, so they put me on to that. And watching how hungry A Boogie was and Don Q, seeing the chains, the, the jewelry, you know, I'm like broke as hell. Like, I want to add this shit. I'm young. I'm like 17, 18 when I started college. So I'm young. I turned 18 in, in college, so I started at 17. I'm young as hell. I'm like, I'm trying to make it out of here. This shit, this is not how I'm trying to be broke as hell. Working a nine to five. Me and my roommates are talking about how once we get out of here, we not even trying to work a nine to five for our whole life. So what's the point of even being in this college? That's how we think. So I'm looking at this interview and I'm like, or this freestyle, I'm like, well, maybe I can do this shit. I feel like I could do this. I always used to freestyle in high school with the homies, you know, just underground shit. So I'm like, I could really make this a career. So I moved to the West Coast. My folks got a job opportunity to move to the West Coast. So I moved with them, just moved out here. That's when I branched out and started taking this whole career shit seriously. Do you, do you have any beats on your phone? Mm-hmm. You do? Let's put one on and put you to the test. Say, say you know how to freestyle. Let's get it. <laughs> Let's get it. I have some real shit. I don't really freestyle on the spot. Freestyle on the spot? Okay. I freestyle sometimes. You sometimes. freestyle sometimes? I'm more of a writer. Mm-hmm. Songwriter. You know, right? Singer, mm-hmm. songwriter compared to, you know, freestyle and stuff. But mm-hmm. something I've been working on personally. There is one. <clears throat> when, you, when you guys are in the studio, is it more one take type things or is it well written maybe no it's 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 well written and there's some times that i've gone back to my songs <coughs> and freestyle and just gone off emotion and, and gone off the vibe um but usually we're song ready before we go to the studio so when we get in there we can just bust it out exactly and then get to ad libs and yep. then, you know have the engineer start doing his yep. thing yeah i don't write in the studio either because yeah, no. that's just we you know if we had a label putting thousands of dollars into right. our studio time we would but when we on the crunch of time and money yeah. you gotta have it all ready to go you know what i'm saying so that makes sense. my writing process though is i do freestyle mind games i freestyle that hook literally like it's so weird like i hear everything <laughs> come to my head that makes sense like the way i create like even when i was uh 
you know, even when I was like just down, taking breaks from music, you know, because I wasn't in a financial spot, I would like have dreams of like hooks and, and, and lyrics that would just come to me and beats and melodies. So I could just, I'm always having like a direct channel to my brain that like ideas. So it always comes to me. Like um, creativity. Creativity is always flowing. I'm gonna put on uh, some shit that we did so we could just get to that. Oh yeah, do it. Made it? Mm-hmm. Let's spit that shit. Do it. This one's gonna be on the uh, the mixtape that comes out. We're trying to get this done by October. Yeah. It's gonna have like eight, nine songs. Couple singles and then the rest are gonna be with me and Mark. Can't just give him the whole EP. Yeah, right now. hell no, hell no. <laughs> like, yeah, we gonna give y'all the whole EP. Yeah, nah. <sighs> Damn, that's lit. Yeah, yeah, man. Performing, how many performances have you guys done? And which one was the most enjoyable? The most enjoyable yeah. one for me was definitely uh, Foam Fest One. That was St. Patrick's Day. It was in April or March, I think. Um, it was at uh, the industrial complex of uh, Portland. There was about 2,000 people in, uh, in uh, attendance. I performed mind games. When I performed mind games, the crowd went crazy. But they had their phone lights on me. Everybody was recording. They was dancing, screaming, cheering. And that was just an unreal experience because I performed all the time. But to be in such a big crowd, how everybody fucking with me and feeling that energy, that made me really feel like I was on my way. So definitely want to be in more environments like that. Definitely only looking for opportunities like that at this point. You know, that's what we've been doing, getting bigger stages, getting bigger opportunities. It seems like the city's just thriving at the same time, too. This summer, a lot of stuff has been got, getting done. A lot of opportunities opened up for me and Sunny to perform. You know, opportunities we, we haven't yet spoken on for the future. Yeah. And opportunities that we have already done this summer. It's just been amazing. Portland's definitely growing with opportunities. Because back in uh, 2017, 2018, when I first started rapping out here, I would have never saw myself rapping in front of 2,000 people like I did on St. Patrick's Day. That was crazy. Was it nerve wracking or were you just like? Nah, it was like natural. In the moment. I only got nervous once when I performed. That was my first show in Seattle. Seattle. That was my first performance of my music ever, mm-hmm. and I just didn't know how the crowd would would react to my music because I, you know, that was my first song. Was mm-hmm. I didn't really have my my sound polished. I had my I wasn't, you know, when you create as me personally when I create music, 
I want I want a part of me to be in my music. I want it to be authentic. I want y'all to feel my energy in my music. 100%. So when I was putting my first song out, yeah, I didn't know how to convey yet that yet. convey that yet. So that being said, you know, I was like, then I'm not gonna know how they fuck with it. But when I rapped it, they fucked with it and all that nervousness went away, you know. Mm -hmm. I loosened up, I took like a shower, I drank it like drank a beer or something, mm -hmm. like enough. But that's that's what I was gonna ask. Like do you that's guys... that's what I did from my first show. I don't do it anymore. Oh, okay. I only do it oh, I do it at events <laughs> and stuff to drink, but like I'm not finna drink before I perform because mm -hmm. I don't need to. That'd be crazy. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I performed a couple times. Um one was it was the same dude who through the show that he performed at Phone Fest. It was a different different uh, venue this time, but it was at the same place. Uh, that was my second performance. The one before that, I had performed at this place in Portland. But um, the second time that I performed, it was, it, you know, there wasn't like tons of people. There's there probably only like, what, 70 people. But I mean, it, it was lit and it was an experience that I, I could never take back. Um, got to see my family there, you know, my friends and all that. And some new faces too, which was you know my experience. I really, you no, know, I haven't performed enough, but I love performing. It's something that I I really want to put my energy towards. And you know, like you, like Prince said, when you when you perform your music to these people, you want your music to have an authentic feeling that comes from you, so these people can see that. Like it's not just some bullshit. You know, they're seeing some like you're expressing your feelings, and it's a way that I would read my stress. Um, I used to drink before my shows and stuff, and get I'd get fucked up. But to be honest, I'm three months clean now from weed and alcohol. Yeah, I stopped drinking and, and, and smoking and doing all that shit because it was you know I had you know I had bigger opportunities back then that I had fumbled because of my my addictions and shit like that. You know, so I had to get it together. But um, yeah, dude, I I performing we're, we got some we got some opportunities coming up that we won't talk about now. We'll wait until until. The people see it, but um, yeah, performing man, that's one of my favorite things. I haven't done it enough, but I'm trying to get out there more for yeah. sure. Cool. And there's obviously more opportunities. Oh yeah. Okay. Cool. Oh yeah. I mean, that's some big, some big names, some big names for mm -hmm. sure. Um, what are what are some of the big names? Boozy Badass, you know. Boozy Badass. Oh, yeah, you know, Boozy Badass. Yeah. That's something I'm like, you know, we're we're you were, this you were supposed to go on tour with somebody too. I was, past. yeah, I was, yeah, um. I was supposed to. Uh, I was on the tour with uh, this dude named Soul Luna, and this was this was. Uh, you don't have I was, to say too much, but at least yeah. say who you were gonna go with, you know. Trippy. Right. Yeah, Trippy Red. He um, was supposed to go on tour with Trippy Red, and he he was not with him personally, but with with Luna. With Luna, to open up for show, Trippy Red open up. on the same stage. I just saw that flyer. I messed up my opportunity due to my drinking, and um, mm. so the man, you know, his his manager, Soul Luna's manager, I got kicked off the team due to that. Drink. Um, to drinking, yeah, because I couldn't, you know, I'm a, I'm only 19, so you know, it's just liability, you know, it makes sense, you know, the, you know, like, I, you know, I can't be drinking like that and getting wild. It's just the reality of it. So you learn, you know, right now learn, yeah, months, so. straight up, man, on the grind. You know, so we're independent artists for sure. We do everything for ourselves, and that's kind of how it is. You know, we don't got nobody to help us out like that. So we're trying to start. We're trying to reach out to, them. you know, contests, get into contests. And, you know, stuff like that. Yo. What's good, brother? Hey, Slava. here, bro. Oh, you guys don't? Uh, can can yeah. I pull up real quick? Yeah. yeah. What's up to you real quick? What's up with it, man? Wow. I bet you guys are tripping. What's up? Yeah. Nice to meet you. I'm like, who's coming down the stairs right here? It's bro. Y'all burning some weed? What the fuck? Uh, yeah, a little bit. We, uh, I think, we got any more? Mm -hmm. uh, that was a blast. Yeah, we got no more weed. Flows, flows, I can't see. It's echo. That's the echo, echo the sound right there, there yo. Yeah. Yeah. We got some work coming. He smelled that weed. He was like, I just, yeah. sent, you, I just, sent, you, I just <laughs> sent you a uh, DM on the way here, bro. I wish, bro. I wish. Yeah, oh, man, that's crazy. crazy. You guys are here. My studio is upstairs. And we should check it out after this, too. Yeah, yeah. I'm chilling. Yeah, for sure. Hell yeah. For sure. Like, yeah. I mean, he's, he's bullet kind of sick. I got six. Yeah, I saw that. Yeah, so, uh, you want to have that? You got any more questions? Oh, uh, I got see. One. People, you guys want to collab with? Tour some. I want to collab. I, well, all the people I want to collab with, like, yeah, truly, have passed. Like, XXX like, and Tassian is on number one on that list. I would love to collab with. Or Juice World. You know, you got Kurt Cobain, Bob Marley. You got, uh, 
Whitney Houston, you know, there's tons of artists. I would I would have loved to collab with Bob Marley. I would have loved to collab with Whitney Houston. There's a whole list of artists in my head I was thinking about too, you know, but can't it kind of I kind of lost that moment. Who's alive that you want to collab with? Though? Who's what alive? Just alive, yeah. So, yeah. Um, Kanye West, Jamie Fox, uh, Drake. You know, um, Post Malone. Adele, you know, there's more. And I, like I said, this hip hop thing transcends because I, I want to do like pop records, you know, where you have a hip hop artist on a pop record. Just like the old days, you know, back in like 10, 2012, that's what music was. So I do want to kind of bring that back, but with my own twist to fit into the today's modern hip hop genre. Not like in 2012 where you're doing a J. Cole verse on a Katy Perry feature, you know, I'm talking about like more like a Sofago on a uh, you know on like a Drake song you know that would be That's fire crazy. a song with like Sofago and Drake or a song like Sofago like that kind of sound that kind of mm -hmm. style just shout out to him shout out to that kind of new style you got a bunch of new shit going on right now shit I got my eyes on Kid Leroy uh, probably Drake obviously Post Malone that's no hands uh, no hands asked uh, no questions asked um, I would say NBA Youngboy for sure, and yeah, most mostly the Kid Leroy and NBA Youngboy, cause cause I've been I've always loved their music and I'm trying to collab with some of them. Mm. If I see, I some, chance. see some TikToks where they're like NBA Youngboy friends and they're just like throwing shit and like fucking. Well, yeah, I mean, acting wild. That's that's not who I am, but okay. you know. This is TikTok though. That's what they Yeah. I mean, mean, so like when I heard the song Kid Leroy and NBA Young Boy, mm -hmm. um, that song I mean it hearing that side of NBA Young Boy singing, like when he was on that song Bandit with Juice World back then. Yeah, we shit, all know like, Young Boy just don't just do the hard shit. He's doing the he, bunch he, of shit. He does, yeah, he, he, he he's know. really vulnerable with his music. He does a lot of Diverse shit, you know. He he lets his fans and, and the world know his feelings and yeah. his music. So whether he's feeling mad that day or he's feeling, you know, right. like being emotional through his music and letting them know about how he's feeling on house arrest or whatever it may be that goes on in his head, he's letting us know live right there. That's why I like 100%. his music too. Mm -hmm. I yeah, he's an artist. I do want to work with as well. Hundred percent. Yeah, no, I'm, I'm trying to. I'm trying to get that verse. I think it's gonna happen. Manifest. That'd be, be tough, tough, bro. Sure, man, tough. <laughs> That'd be tough. Let's, let's shake yeah. on it. You and young boy. That'd let's be make tough. it happen. Let's, let's make, make it happen. happen. I mean, he's young. NBA young boy, he's like, what? He's, he's around 20, my age. He's like 24. 24. Yeah. Oh, yeah. 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 Yeah.